Yes, Chris Gecko's scientific name is Corellophus silitalium. Silitalis. Ciliatus. They are native to southern New Caledonia, and their conservation status is vulnerable, and their population is currently decreasing out in the wild. With that being said, they were discovered in 1866 by French zoologist Alphonse Guichinat and was thought to be extinct until rediscovered in 1994, when they were rediscovered by Robert C. in an expedition. There is little research on them, and their lifespan in captivity is known to be about 15 to 20 years, but could be longer based on the lack of research. Temp their temperatures that they need to be in in their enclosures need to be about 72 to 75 degrees. They live in room temperature environments, so they don't need any additional heating. Anything above 80 will suffocate them. Um, their breeding peak for females would be about 10 to four to 10 years old. And the way to tell between a male and a female is the males will have large pores on their belly. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no. Then, now how do you tell the female? So on her. For her to tell if she's a female, we just look at her belly if she'll let us look. <laughs> she never does. But when you look, <laughs> when you look between her back legs, she does not have any pores. She does, but they're very small. And that indicates that she is a female. Whereas the males, they will have very prominent big pores in order to do their thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, they are frugivorous, which means they eat fruits and insects. We gotta go. And they... Most people say that it's good to keep a bowl in their enclosure, but normally they drink water <laughs> off of the dew of plants and the glass in their enclosure. So see, mommy. Um, UVB is not required for them in their tanks, but it is beneficial. Most people do keep them in enclosures with live plants and vivitariums and do keep a UVB light on them, and it does help with their lifespan, but it's not required. <laughs> <laughs> Another name for the crested gecko is an eyelash gecko, and that's because they have prominent eyelashes over their eyes and down the back. Another, because they don't have eyelids, they will lick their eyes to clean dirt and other substances out of their eyes. Now, with that being said, how do you tell if one is sleeping? When they sleep, their eyelashes tilt downwards, and their colors will get very light and pale. That is called firing down. They do this because they are nocturnal and they sleep during the day in trees. So they fire down in order to blend in in the sunlight against the trees and the bark. Which means during the night they fire up so they get this darker color like she is turning right now. In order to blend in with their surroundings to avoid predators. They also have sticky toes which means they're arboreal which means they live up in trees, and if you can see when she's walking, she curls her toes upwards when she walks to release the sticky pads so she can walk normally without sticking like walking on suction cups. Another common thing with crested geckos is their tail. They use their tail just like a monkey does to hold on to branches if they fall. And unfortunately, unlike most geckos, when they drop their tail, they don't grow it back. So once they lose they, their tail, they get what some people call frog butt. So their butt would look like a little frog. It's super cute too. And as you can tell, they're leapers. <laughs> they are very jumpy, but they are able to be tamed down. Um, based on research, it is beneficial for juveniles and young geckos to be housed in a five to 10 gallon tank and moved up to a 20 gallon tank once past the juvenile stage. Now they are nocturnal, right? Yes, they are. Um, I was gonna say something that I lost my train <laughs> What was I gonna say? It was something about their cultures. Oh, um, it is common to find a crested gecko as Ooh. an adult. <laughs> As an adult without its tail. Unfortunately, with how they are, they are very jumpy, very shy, 
and so stress or little things like being housed with other geckos can cause accidental tail drops. It doesn't hurt them, it's not anything that affects their health, it's just something where they lose that ability to hold on. Let's see if I can get her to do it. Where she holds on with her tail, she won't be able to do that without her tail, so she has a little bit less of a grip on branches when she's starting to fall. But other than that, it's nothing that should deter anyone from buying a gecko with frog butt. <laughs> I think they look adorable.